Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here. Today we're going to look at one of Dell's newest budget gaming notebooks. And this is the Dell Inspiron 15 7000 series. The model number is 7559. This notebook has some very impressive specs for the price. But is it the best budget gaming notebook for under 800 bucks? Let's find out. Here are the specs. You're getting a quad-core i5, an NVIDIA 960M with 4GB of GDDR5, 8 gigs of RAM, a 1TB drive, and a 15.6 inch Full HD display, all in one pretty slick looking package. The design of the Inspiron notebook is pretty good. The exterior is made out of plastic, but it has this nice soft touch finish that makes it so smooth to touch. The red Dell logo makes it stand out among other Inspiron laptops, and it makes it look like a high-end gamer's notebook. The weight comes in at 5.7 pounds, and its thickest point is just over an inch. The bottom plate is made out of plastic, and it can be removed for future upgrades. Now let's take a look at the build quality of the new Inspiron 15 7000. As you can see here, there is some medium keyboard flex, but keep in mind I am pressing down very firmly. The weakest point of this notebook is by the display section towards the bottom. It tends to flex a little more than I would like. However, only time will be able to tell if this will become an issue. And our last test in regards to the build quality is the top section flex. There is some very minimal flex, especially towards the Dell logo. However, this is not a concern. On the left side of the notebook, you have your AC charging port, exhaust port for your fan, two USB 3s, and your headset microphone jack combo. On the right side of the notebook, you have your SD card reader, USB 3, full-size HDMI 1.4, gigabit ethernet, and your security lock slot. And last but not least, you have your power status LED indicator towards the front. Let's move on to display performance. This notebook features a 15.6 inch IPS panel with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 p Text and images are pretty sharp, and the overall color saturation is actually not too bad for a budget gamer's notebook. The sRGB came in at 71%, and the Adobe RGB scored 54%. The viewing angles on this notebook is pretty good thanks to the IPS panel that Dell chose. Another nice bonus on this panel is the anti-glare reflective coating that does a good job of reducing glare. This is a quad-core chip based on the all-new Skylake architecture and is clocked at 2.3GHz with turbo boost up to 3.2GHz. This chip is very capable. It can handle almost anything you throw at it. Now for you guys out there that want the best performance, step up to the Core i7 model for 100 bucks more. That chip is a freaking monster. But for you guys out there that are on a budget, I wouldn't even hesitate to recommend the base quad-core i5. The price point is excellent for this configuration. Here's the star of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, for less than 800 bucks, you're getting an NVIDIA 960M. Yes, that's right. A 960M, not a 950 or a 940M. This GPU features 4GB of GDDR5, and it can play many of today's high-end games at 1920 by 1080p on medium to high settings. Next up, here's a quick test of Battlefield 4 running at 1920 by 1080p on high settings with VSync turned off. Alright, where y'all at? You want some of this? Right now, we're averaging around 45 to 55 frames per second on high settings. Oh, right, well, you want some? Yeah, get down. You don't want none of this. Oh, crap. Almost died. Let me recover. You better not pop your head out. I'm going to get you. You better not. Oh, get down. Oh, man. <laughs> Damn, that was good. All right, who else wants some? Oh, you want some too? Yeah, get down. Oh, payback, baby. As you guys can see, Battlefield 4 runs very smooth on this laptop. I'm running it on high settings at 1080p and it doesn't even break a sweat. You can run it on ultra settings, but the best experience is on high settings. After 45 minutes of Battlefield 4 gameplay, the highest CPU temp was 80 degrees Celsius and the highest GPU temp was 74 degrees Celsius. The cooling system on this notebook did a great job of keeping this machine running cool and efficient. I was impressed. In terms of better overall cooling efficiency, the Lenovo Y700 was just a tad better. Let's take a look at the exterior temps using the Flare 1 iOS thermal imaging sensor. In the center it gets to around 54 to 55 degrees Celsius. The top fans will generate around 55 to 56 degrees Celsius. The top section of the keyboard will hover around 48 to 52 degrees Celsius. Let's check the WASD keys now. These keys will usually be around 39 to 42 degrees Celsius and the base anywhere from 35 to 31 degrees Celsius. The Inspiron 7559 is rocking a 6 cell 74 watt hour battery pack that can get you around 4 to 5 hours of casual use like web browsing, typing reports, and video streaming. With this test, I had the screen brightness set at around 50%. Now if you do plan on gaming on the battery pack, expect around an hour and 30 minutes of gameplay. Next up is keyboard performance. You get a standard full size keyboard with a 10 key numeric keypad, 
The keys are just a tad shallow, however it offers good tactile feedback and the overall typing experience is good. Yes, you do get a backlit keyboard with two options, either high or low. With this notebook, you're getting a large buttonless trackpad. The surface feels okay, I just wish they would use a better texture to make it smoother. Two finger scrolling is good, but trying to navigate around and trying to right click on items can be a pain. It just doesn't feel like a responsive trackpad like the ones found on the XPS line. Yes, I get it, it's much cheaper than XPS, but please get us at least somewhere near that level. This laptop has two top facing speakers and a mini sub on the bottom. The sound quality is decent. However, action packed games like Battlefield 4 just sound dull. And to make matters worse, the mini sub on the bottom is worthless. Here's a quick sound test in action. Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here, testing out the webcam on the new Dell Inspiron 7559 series. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Here's a quick look at the internal components of the Inspiron 7559. Simply remove one screw and boom, you got the cover off. The first component is your 1TB drive with 8GB of SSD cache. The performance from it is slow. I would recommend upgrading to an SSD drive or just get an M.2 SSD for your OS and just keep the stock drive for your games. You get two DIMM slots for your RAM. This model features 8GB of DDR3 RAM, which should be fine for many of you guys. However, you can update to 16 gigs if you wish. This notebook does not support the newer DDR4 RAM, so keep that in mind. Next up is fan noise. The fans on this notebook are fairly quiet during light to medium use. However, fire up some Battlefield 4 and you'll hear these two fans running. It's not loud and disturbing by any means, but they can get pretty loud. The Intel dual band wireless AC3165 caused a lot of problems when I first got it. It kept losing connection to my router, and I would have to restart just to regain a connection. The good news here is I downloaded the Intel driver update utility and just installed the latest firmware update for the wireless card, and from that point on, my connection has been rock solid. Let's get to the conclusion of the Dell Inspiron 157559 series. This notebook offers amazing performance and value. First of all, you get a quad-core i5, an NVIDIA 960M, 15.6 inch IPS Full HD panel, all in one sleek looking package. This is one of the best budget notebooks I have ever tested for under 800 bucks. It just offers a killer combination of performance to price ratio. The major cons were the shallow keyboard, speaker quality, and the flexing on the bottom of the display panel. With that being said, Dell is offering a nice overall package for budget gamers this holiday season. Alright guys, this completes my full review on the new Dell Inspiron 15 7000 series. If you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to stomp on that like button and don't forget to sub. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.